In our last video, we talked about the importance of having a financial plan. Now we're going to discuss estate planning and its significance to your family, the values you share, and how it may allow you to leave an impact on your community. Did you know that only 5% of Canadians leave a gift in their will to charity? We'll discuss the benefits that many Canadians are not taking advantage of. I'm Jack Young, a London Community Foundation board member. My wife Eleanor and I have a family fund at LCF that engages our adult daughters, and we will leave a lasting legacy that reflects what's important to us, healthcare, housing, medically fragile people, and many more. We're here again with Sue and Hugh. So let's talk about using marketable securities to make charitable gifts. Well, this is a really good way to manage your capital gains um, by making gifts with pre-tax dollars. If you were going to take a gain and take the money, you would pay tax at your charitable, at your uh, income tax rate. If you gifted part of that capital gain to a charity, you don't pay any tax on the gain. So that's really good. Plus, you um, increase your donation tax credit with your gift of any gift. But when, with the gift of shares, you get a double whammy in tax advantage. And certainly, our investment advisor counseled us always to manage capital gains. Don't let them get too big because to both Tom and I were savers, so the tendency is just to leave the gains in there, but it's not a good idea. It's true. Many people can take advantage of using their maximum allowable donation tax credit every year. Sue, so tell us a more about your granting. Where did you go from there? I slowly continued to build the capital of the fund, but at the same time, I designated part of each of my contributions to what LCF calls flow-through gifting. And that meant that I could dis have LCF disperse more in a year than my fund could grant based on its capital. So it was a sort of a combination of flow-through gifting and building the capital of the fund. So as I sort of got the hang of how to do this, I was able to venture into making more ga major gifts. Interesting. i like to hear about some of these larger initiatives that you supported through your fund. Um, well, initially, I used the fund to encourage my daughters to support causes that interested them. Um, one of these, uh, my daughter Allison suggested, was made to the speech language pathology department at uh, London Health Sciences Center. Um, and they were instigating a program of using iPads for people who were unable to speak to help those people communicate. Um, and I think the initial gift was $5,000 for three iPads in the stands to put them on. And it was very successful there. Um, first patient who used one was a fellow with technical expertise and he was so keen to make it work he helped develop um, more software for it. That morphed into a three-year pledge to build more iPads and then that three-year pledge morphed into another three-year pledge which allowed the staff from the speech language department to take their findings to uh, conferences and things like that. So that was really exciting. And the other pledge was suggested by my daughter, Margaret, who has an interest in mental health. Um, and it was a project uh, to enhance mental health care through the arts. Uh, it was initiative of St. Joe's and it was a music and um, painting initiative. Two years, I think it was maybe $2,000 gift. And then the program was so successful that St. Joe's agreed to fund a program uh, for, it was called Recovery Through Creative Arts Program, but it became a funded program. 
So that was pretty exciting for the girls to see an impact. And then uh, the next sort of really major gift was following my heart attack. I uh, funded a project at the uh, St. Joe's uh, Heart Failure Clinic. So all things that each of us had an interest in uh, funded our gifting sort of in the next sort of tit five or six years of the fund. So tax advantages are an important part of estate planning. How does charitable giving figure into that? Well, <laughs> tax planning is something you need to do. It's tiresome, but it's a good idea to do it. Uh, again, Tom was very adamant that you didn't let capital gains build up too much. So the easy way to deal with capital gains is to make charitable gifts. Um, and that means that, yes, if you exercise your gains, realize your gains, is that the right word? Realize your gains, um, you have to pay tax on them, but you could pay less tax by paying a charity with part of those that money. So tax planning is where it's at, unfortunately. <laughs> So was it at that point that you decided to make charitable gifts through your will? Yes. Certainly after my heart attack, I began to think that, oh dear, I should think about this. Um, I had two quite large life insurance policies, uh, and I named my fund was a beneficiary of one of those policies, and LCF itself, their general fund, was the beneficiary of the others. The thinking for that went back to Hughes' plan, um, where we had a percentage of our Tom's and my assets designated for social capital legacy. And I was slowly building the capital of my fund, but it wasn't anywhere near what the percentage we talked about was. The other benefit is that a life insurance uh, the proceeds from a life insurance policy are paid out immediately. So um, my fund wouldn't have to wait for the whole estate to be settled before that payment came out. It's complicated, life insurance, but it I, works. I imagine there was a big learning curve for all of this. Oh, yes, <laughs> there was. Um, yeah, it was like 17 years of graduate studies in uh, estate law and tax accounting, but uh, wow. Hugh's, Hugh's document book was my oh, Bible, my textbook. <laughs> and so you could have donated the policy, the paid up policy, and get a donation receipt for the cash value if you wanted to do that. I know that's something you can do, but you also now can keep control of the policy and still make them the beneficiary. So yeah, I know, I think what you can do is donate, if you donate the policy, they give you a credit for the cash value right. immediately, and then the charity takes over the policy. You can give a new policy, and the premiums that are being paid become donation receipts right. as you go along. I did that with, yeah, at the with beginning. Parkwood. But if you give them a paid-up policy, then they just assign you whatever the total cash value is. You get a credit for that right. as, a, as a lump sum donation that year. Yeah. So, Hugh, th this sounds a little complicated. So how can the average person learn about this? Well, uh, there's opportunities to talk to your advisor or read, you know, read books or go online. It, it, it's certainly maybe not the most exciting topic, so people tend not to do that. So they do need some coaching from their advisor, I think, more often than not, to think about it, because most of the times we don't want to deal with these difficult, you know, challenging questions that are complicated. And dealing with our mortality tends to clear out a party, you know, so I've learned not to talk about it. Can I talk to you about it? <laughs> and the, and the tax, a, a tax accountant helps, too. I think you need to talk to... Yeah. Not only your, well, all of your advisors, A, your financial advisor and your yeah. tax. The team. The, the team. team, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gets it started and of course then you want to take it to your accountant and say, is, is this a good decision or not? We know government funded programs can't address all of our community's needs. It takes the generosity of people living in the community to help each other. By working with LCF, you can continue to support the causes that are important to you making London and Middlesex and the agencies that deliver these important services stronger for today and tomorrow. 
Our next video will discuss long-term strategic giving and how you can transform and change the trajectory of issues and initiatives in our community.